Hello everyone, welcome to the Mid Speeds Live class. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with some common words to get our fingers going. Here we go, ready? Dance, men, completely, sort, exactly, fight, expect, explain, cause, for, full, food, met, story, whatever, build, speak, glass, pain, check, glare, corner, misses, chest, not, hot, rather, month, real, touch, park, bring, there, drink, ago, force, you've, fast, lost, attention, wish, mark, wave, shout, fill, begin, baby, interest, money, fun, green, cheek, mine, clear, brown, forward, near, picture, may, cool, drive, hug, shake, ear. All right, now moving into words that start with initial P, W, and B. Hi, Nora. <laughs> All right, here we go. Back, palm, war, bat, peg, win, bill, pot, weld, break, pry, ring, pow, ball, wet, wad, belt, pet, pup, bust, wove, bright, wedge, proof, wade, prude, brute, bug, prod, wait, war, pick, bet, bald, pass, welt, Part, bar, wart. Wind, bid, pill. Pack, bolt, wave. Wash, black, play. Watch, plight, bleak. Brag, pride, wail. Wild, pest, bike. One, par, bark. All right. Now let's move into names and addresses. Here we go. Names and addresses. Mr. Bob K. Weiler, W-E-I-L-E-R, Bermudan Springs School District, Guidance Counselor, 110, Sam Way, York Springs, Pennsylvania, 17372, Jennifer S. Rivenberg, R-I-V-E-N-B-U-R-G, 26 Mertza Lane, Henrietta, New York, 14567. William G. Perry, P-E-R-R-Y, Hendry County School District, Cluton Sub Office, 475 East Ocala, Clouston, Florida, 33450. Allison M. Supple, <clears throat> S U P P L E, 19 Shady Lane, Bolton, Connecticut, 06040. Ms. Julie L. Dash, D A S H, Route 3, Box 394, Stacy, Minnesota, 55079. Guidance Department, Ray Moore, Public School District, Reorganized District Number Two, Peculiar, Missouri, 64078. Mr. Miguel T. Rodriguez, R O D R I G U E Z, 5659 Los Palos Circle, Buena Park, California, 90620. Julie A. Moore, M-O-O-R-E, P 
P.O. Box 59, San Miguel, California, 93451. Career Center, Moore High School, P.O. Box 20, Moore, New Mexico, 87035. All right. Now I've got some words that have focus on word families ending in ability. So here are your words and then I'm gonna read you the sentences, okay? Sensibility, instability, adaptability, irritability, possibility, excitability, acceptability, legibility, capability. And here are your sentences. What is the capability of the computer? The capability is 24, or excuse me, the capability is outstanding. The legibility of the document is in question. Does the legibility of the contract affect your decision? We are interested in product acceptability. The acceptability of her ideas may cause some problems. She does not use any sensibility when making a decision. John's mental instability worries me. Her instability caused many problems. What is the degree of adaptability? The consumer adaptability to the product has not been proven. Jamie's irritability is annoying. The medicine causes irritability and tiredness. What is the possibility of an acquittal? Is there any possibility of a hung jury in this case? Too much coffee or tea can cause excitability. All right, so now I've got a number drill that's in paragraph form. Okay, and we're gonna start off with uh, different feet. Here we go. 2,800 square feet, 16 feet, 118 feet, 25 feet, 18 feet, 500 square feet, 45 feet, 320 feet, 50 feet, 1600 square feet. And here is your paragraph. According to the property description, the lot is 60 by 100 feet. The house has approximately 1500 square feet of living space. The master bedroom is 12 feet by 18 feet, and the other two bedrooms are 12 feet by 13 feet each. There is a family room that is 10 feet by 15 feet, and a small kitchen and dining area. The living room is 13 feet by 15 feet. The house also has two bathrooms. All right. Consonant compounds. This emphasizes initial SP, initial TR, final FG. Here we go. Try to spell the word spiffy. Did you speak about the special circumstances? He spoke to his spouse on Friday. The spoon had a spot. The sponge will absorb the spill. Jay spent a lot of money on the space in the mall. Put the trash under the tree. The trap door was near the tramway. Was the train on the trolley tracks? The troops were put up in trailers. The truck has no trunk. Try to tell us the truth. The roofing contractors are driving me nuts. Ron is depriving her the right to make a living. Are you leaving and moving to Minnesota? The business is thriving and she's saving her money. Her diving career is over. He is living, although barely surviving. Okay. Now I've got some sentences here that have different numbers in them. 
There we go. I'm gonna say subpoena, that's initial S, final P. The subpoena was delivered 11 days before the trial date. Mr. Barron's received a gold watch for his 35 years of service from the company. We sent out 235 invitations to the banquet and have received 35 confirmations. Did you request 18 or 80 dozen cases of paper? 17 of the students attended the seminar on CPR. Did you say that three of your cousins were graduates of the University of Illinois? 214 people were killed in the crash of United Airlines Flight 93. Stacy purchased six cans of tomato juice and four cans of grape juice. The bag contained two ounces of cocaine. 6,190 people are registered for the fall semester at Valley State College. Were there five or six students involved in the cheating scandal? One person voted no. 1,002 students achieved a grade point average of 3.5 or better. Amanda sent five copies of the letter along with her resume to Mr. Brighton. Was your order for eight or 80 boxes of Kleenex? All right. Hi, Pandora. Hi, Catherine. All right, now let's go ahead and move into literary. Okay. All right, so this is gonna be a continuation from what we started earlier um, from the, sheriff, uh, the sheriff's report. Okay, we started this earlier. We're gonna do a continuation. Here we go. Julie received a large bump to the back of her head, which was tender to the touch, swollen and red in color. Julie had multiple bruises on the outside and inner parts of her arms. Julie had minor swelling to her right cheek eye area of her face, along with redness and tenderness. Julie also received a small laceration to her right hand. I handed Julie Dash a purple domestic violence card and advised her of the help she could receive. I interviewed Dana inside the kitchen area of the house and the following is a summary of what she told me. Dana told me she was inside the house during the incident. While inside the house, Dana heard loud yelling and screaming coming from outside. Dana ran outside through the kitchen door and observed Reed holding Julie by the arms. Julie was being violently shaken back and forth by Reed. While Reed was holding her, Julie was pleading for her to help. As soon as Reed saw Donna, or excuse me, Dana, he let go of Julie and ran from the house. Connor Reed is a white male, five feet, 10 inches tall, 180 pounds. He was last seen wearing a black and gray colored long sleeved shirt and blue jean pants. 
He was also carrying a black backpack. Reed left the incident location on foot in an unknown direction. Reed has not been interviewed about the incident due to him being on the run. I took digital photographs of Julie's injuries and attached them to this report. I also downloaded the photographs to the DIMS system. Additional charges to be considered. PC 236, false imprisonment, should be considered. Disposition, case cleared by exceptional means. Please forward to district attorney for filing. Attempt suspect contact, Connor Reed. I have attempted to locate Reed at his place of residence and last known address. I have been told by the victim and a witness at his residence that he has not returned back home since the incident occurred. At this time, Reed's whereabouts are unknown. Disposition, attach to the original report. I interviewed witness Donna Dash over the telephone. I told her I was the private investigator working on the behalf of the defendant, Connor Reed. I asked Dana Dash if she would be willing to talk to me about this case. And she told me she would. She also allowed me to tape record this interview. The following is what Dana Dash related to me. Dana Dash is the mother of the listed victim in this case. Due to the fact that she has the same last name as the victim, I will refer to her by her first name during this report. Dana told me she is the mother of Julie Dash. Julie is listed as the victim in this case. Julie and Reed were living in their back guest house, which is on the same property as her house. During the morning hours on the date of this incident, Dana heard a commotion coming from the back house where Julie and Reed were living. Dana went outside to see what was going on. When Dana got outside, she saw Reed walking out of his house. Julie came out of the house and ran up to Reed and grabbed him, trying to stop him from leaving. Dana said Julie has both an alcohol and drug addiction. Julie also takes medications for her anxiety. Dana could tell Julie had been drinking that morning. I asked Dana if she saw Reed do anything to Julie on the day of this incident. Dana told me Reed was only trying to push Julie away from him. Julie was grabbing onto Reed and was trying to stop him from leaving. I asked Dana if she remembered giving the police officer a statement on the morning of this incident. 
Dana told me she was really upset. She remembered the police officer kept asking her if Julie was on something. Dana told the police officer that Julie was taking something and she could smell the alcohol on her breath. I reviewed the portion of the police report which contained Dana's statement written by Officer Newton. After reading Dana the written statement, I asked her if her statement was accurate. Dana laughed and said, I don't remember saying all of that. Dana said they have never had any kind of violence in their house. Dana said Julie was grabbing at Reed and he was only trying to get away from Julie by pushing her away from him. Once Reed was able to get away from Julie, he walked away. Dana said it appeared to her that Reed was only trying to get away from the situation. I asked Dana if she had ever seen Reed get physical with Julie. Dana told me she has not. I asked Dana if she saw any visible injuries on Julie that morning. Dana told me nothing unusual. I asked Dana if she saw any bruises on Julie. Dana told me Julie always has bruises on her body. Dana said when Julie gets drunk, she falls into things. Julie has a medical condition which causes her to bruise very easily. Dana told me she was not trying to stick up for Reed. She just knows from what she saw that Reed was just trying to get away from Julie. All right, so we'll stop there. There's more, but we'll stop there. Okay, let's do some jury charge. I'll read this one. I'll read this one at uh, 140, okay? All right, here we go. And the subject is mental incompetency to contract. Actually, you know what? Is this the one I wanted? No, that's not the one I wanted. I'm sorry. That's one page off. This one is uh, attorney and client privilege. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, an attorney at law, when retained by another, is entitled to fair and reasonable compensation for the professional services rendered. There is no fixed standard by which the value of the services of an attorney can be determined. His value and reasonable price necessarily vary with the magnitude and importance of the particular case. The degree of responsibility attaching to the work performed, the difficulty of the matters involved, the time consumed, and the benefits derived. In ascertaining the value of such services, you will exercise your sound discretion and judgment and allow such reasonable amount as you believe constitutes a just and fair compensation for the services rendered, not to exceed the sum of $30,000. In determining the value of the services rendered, 
you may take into consideration the fact that at the time of undertaking the work, the attorneys bound themselves to make no charge for their services if they fail to secure beneficial results. The fact that these services were to be rendered on a contingent fee basis, which means that no charge was to be made unless beneficial results were obtained for the defendant should be considered by you in determining the value of the services. It is customary for attorneys to charge more when they undertake to render professional services on a contingent fee basis because under such a contract, no charge can be made unless beneficial results are obtained no matter how much actual work may have been performed. You are instructed that the mere fact, if it be a fact, that the litigation did not result to such advantage to defendant as he may have hoped it would, does not preclude the right of plaintiffs to recover in this action. If the defendant employed the plaintiffs to prosecute, the suit in question, the plaintiffs are entitled to be paid for their services. All right. Let's go ahead and get started with some Q&A. Okay, I'm going to start at 120. I will work my way to 160. Forget, have you ever heard of ProCat Expression Machine? ProCat, um, ProCat used to be a big uh, company. Um, yes, I think that unless they're coming back now, um, let me see here, unmute. Um, ProCat used to have uh, software and machines. Um, boy, I haven't heard them though in a long time. Ha I, did you find a machine? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, actually, I keep getting, I keep seeing these ads uh, from, I guess, uh, NCRA or um, whatever the, the other one is called. I can't remember right now. Um, and they keep saying that at their conventions, uh, you can win one of these things. So then they must be coming back because I kind of think they kind of went away and then maybe they're coming back into the market again. I mean, they used to be a good machine, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 can I say yeah. something? Cause yeah. I, um, I actually have one. My aunt's on pro cat and oh. always, always has been, she has the impression, which is the model before the expression, but I wrote on the, expression at the convention this past August in Vegas. Um, but yeah, ProCat's been around. They never went away. They've, they didn't they've go around. away? Okay. Mm -mm. Maybe no. other machines just got really popular, like from Stenograph and, you know, so maybe it, they just kind of got quiet, but that's good to know. So, they're, so your yeah. aunt's happy with it. Yeah, she is. Um, I wrote on it. Um, it's a good machine. I ended up going, I, I ended up buying my professional machine while I was at the convention because they had deals, but I didn't go with that machine, but it, it is a good one. What did you get, sure. Catherine? I got a Luminex. I got the stenograph yeah. machine, but, um, yeah, pro, the one thing about ProCat is they're a little smaller than Stenograph. So I know they're like, they're, um, and they're based out of Southern California, which is kind of nice if you're in Southern California, because, you know, turnaround times are a little faster if you're close to the place. Like if you ever have to send in your machine for service or stuff like that. But um, are you talking about Stenograph? Um, no, I'm sorry. ProCat. ProCat, ProCat okay. is based 
in Southern California. So that's one of the benefits is if you're out there, um, they're out there near you. Mm -hmm. So, and they have, they have, it's easy to get a hold of people there because they're a little smaller than some of the other companies. Yeah. But um, the machine itself, I wrote on it. It felt really nice. Mm -hmm. If you can win one, that would be huge. Yeah, yeah I know. I think uh, I saw the price. It's at like 6500 right now, I think. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be amazing. And you can use it with whatever software you have. So it's not like you have to use ProCat software. Yeah. Is it, does it have like software built into the machine or is that the um, expression or am I thinking of another one? Um, I mean, yeah, it has stuff on the machine, but you would load your dictionary into the machine. So that's kind of the extent of how you would use it other than whatever features it might have, like if you can scroll back in your notes or whatever, how I, you know, I'm not working yet, so I don't know how people, the full extent of how you actually use what's on the machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the time you have to buy your own um, software. Like it usually it comes in, you know, you, you buy your machine and then you buy your software and you, you decide what software you want. You know, do you want Case Cat? Do you want, um, you know, total eclipse. What does your aunt have, Catherine? She's on ProCat. Uh, yeah, see, they have their own. So they may, yeah. if you go with ProCat, Nora, they may give you a discount if you, you know, were to buy both. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, because I was thinking I should probably look into getting like my professional machine already mm -hmm. because, you know, I want to get into work as soon as possible and I don't want to have to get used to yeah. another machine. So. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then I can give Pandora her baby back so she doesn't have to keep using that Genesis. <laughs> yeah, because you know what? I have to tell you right now, my infinity, you know how it kind of makes that do 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 like it's disconnecting from the jaw. Uh -huh. I, um, I don't know, I can't get you guys up here in a full screen again. I don't know what the deal is. No, that wouldn't do it. Um, so I think I'm going to bow out only because I'm having issues with my machine here, but yeah, it's cause it's this crappy Genesis and, and infinity thing. So I can't, I can't get it to, you know, yeah. show uh, anything on the job. So hurry up and buy one, Nora. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that used to happen to me with that machine and it was the cord. It was the USB cord. Really? Have you ever I don't it. know. No, no. But it's, you know, I keep hearing it go, do 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 do. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's, uh, it's probably the cord because I replaced my cord and it stopped doing that when I had huh. that problem. You might try that. Yeah, it might just be the cord. Mm, okay. Well, because yeah, I I tried, you know, stopping the job and turning the machine off just now, and it's the machine is on and yeah oh but it, like yeah it probably is the cord uh -huh. i wonder if we have a an extra one here well no it probably has to be the cord specifically for this because of the back of it yeah i'll just wait until i get my old machine back <laughs> <laughs> She Nora's probably letting her cats walk all over it and <laughs> oh, yeah, that's kidding. Me. I'm so kidding. You know, it's like you're not practicing today, Nora. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Funny. so anyway, enjoy your Q and A. At least I got okay. some in and, and I was yes. pushing myself. So there you that's go. good. Yeah. All right. This way all I can right, start right. dinner earlier. I mean uh Pandora. Have a good night. You too. You too. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started with Q&A. Okay, I'll mute everyone. Here we go. So we'll start at 120, and I'll get work my way to 160. This is, we're going to start off with the depot. Okay, and uh, defense is starting out. Okay, here we go. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Tom Hudspeth, and I represent a Mr. Hoodie and the Salvation Army, 
in connection with a claim being brought against them arising out of an injury to you that occurred on June 17, 2011. Do you recall an incident on or about that day? Yes, I do. Can you state your full name, your full legal name for the record, please? Helen Margaret Watts. That's W-A-T-T-S, yes. Mrs. Watts, what we're doing here today is taking testimony from you in this rather noisy room, unfortunately. It doesn't bother me. This testimony is being taken down by the court reporter sitting to your left. Although we're in my office, it has the same force and effect as though we were in a court of law. Is that clear? Yeah. You are going to be asked to review your testimony in a little booklet. It looks like a small magazine, and you're going to be asked to sign the last page swearing under penalty of perjury that what you say here today is true. Is that also clear? Yes. If you make any changes in the transcript, he can and probably will comment on it to show that you were having a problem with your memory today from when you reviewed the transcript or that you were being untruthful. Is that also clear? Yes. And I don't want to trick you. I don't want to confuse you. I just want to find out a little information, but I'm going to assume if you answer my question that you heard it, that you understood it, and that you're giving me your best answer. Is that clear? Yes. You're also doing a terrific job of answering questions out loud. The lady cannot spell nods of the head, so if you will continue with yes sir or no sir, that would be best. All right. What is your date of birth, ma'am? Although that's a tacky question to ask a lady. It's August 5, 1933. And what is your current residence address, ma'am? 336 West 20th Street, San Bernardino, California, zip code 92405. How long have you lived on West 20th Street in San Bernardino, ma'am? Off and on all my life, except for 25 years when I was married. So you've been there continuously then for a number of years? Well, I've been there now about 25 years. Do you reside with anyone at that address? Do I what? Can you say that again? Do you live at this address with any family members? My son is living at home. What is your son's name? Anthony Watts. Prior to coming here today, when was the last time you were seen by a doctor for any reason? Prior to coming here today, Yes, ma'am. Who is the last doctor you saw and when was it? Dr. Rose in Riverside. And I don't know the exact date. I would say approximately a month. Do you know what street Dr. Rose has his office on? Not offhand. I have it in papers on my card for appointments, but not offhand. I couldn't say. Do you know Dr. Rose's first name? No, I don't. Is it a man or a lady? A man. Do you know what type of doctor Dr. Rose is? He is a neurologist. Do you have a physician that you would describe as your family physician? I had no family physician because I hadn't been to a doctor for before this happened for eight years. Other than Dr. Rose, 
have you been treated by any other physician in the last calendar year? Not another physician, no. Let me just object for the record as vague and ambiguous. Is that including chiropractors and alternative healthcare providers? No, just physicians. MD, yes. Okay, thank you. And is that the way you understood the question, ma'am? Yeah. Now let's expand on that. Other than Dr. Rose, have you been seen by any healthcare provider? And by that, I'm including physical therapist, chiropractor, nurse, or hospital. Pardon me, let me change that. Yes, ma'am, I forgot. I have to go for blood pressure tests every two months at the physicians. And who is that, ma'am? That's at the county facilities. San Bernardino County Hospital? Yes, I'm sorry, it escaped me. Well, again, we're not here to trick you, just to learn information. And if you ask me what I had for lunch yesterday, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you. So don't be embarrassed about that. So you go in every two months for a blood pressure check? Yes, they send me a notice to come in about it. Okay, do you take medication for high blood pressure? Yes, I do. How long have you taken medication for high blood pressure? Since I was in the emergency from the accident, what is the medication you take? It's called Procardia. It's Procardia XL, 60 milligrams. And you say that you never took heart medication of any type prior to June of 2011? No, I did not. Okay, now let's exclude Dr. Rose. Let's exclude San Bernardino County Hospital. Have you been seen by any healthcare provider in the last 12 months that includes a nurse, physical therapist, hospital, or chiropractor? Yes, a physical therapist. And who is that, ma'am? That is on 1590 Waterman Avenue. Do you know the name of the physical therapist? No, it's clinical therapy. How often do you go to see the physical therapist on Waterman Avenue? I've been going three times a week. For how long? For approximately a month? This last month? Yes. Is that on some doctor's orders that you're going to? Yes, it was recommended by Dr. Rose. Has Dr. Rose performed an examination where he put little suction cups onto the top of your head and you had to lie down on a table with your eyes closed? No. Can you describe for me the examinations that Dr. Rose has done on you? He examined me and tested all of my reflexes, such as putting his finger out and closing my eyes and having to meet his finger with both of mine testing the reflexes of my knees, putting together another sharp instrument across the bottom of my foot. Did he have you do all of the things for reflexes? I can't recall all of them. Did he have you do things with numbers, such as one, two, three, now tell me those backwards? No, he looked in my eyes quite some time with the light they use and said that my right eye is blurring. He also said they took x-rays of my back, my head, my neck, and my wrist and inside my mouth. When did you first go to see Dr. Rose in Riverside? That was the first time, a month ago approximately. I don't know exactly. Well, it is my understanding that after this accident on June 17, 2011, you were taken to a hospital, correct? I was taken to emergency at the county hospital facilities. I'm sorry, you had asked a question perhaps four or five minutes ago about other healthcare providers that she had seen, and I'm only looking for her recollection. I'm not sure that her answer was a summary of all of them. 
she might have told you about the first, and then you followed up with questions. I'm not sure that she completely understood the question. I'm not sure either, but then that is not my style of asking a deposition. I like to pop in here and pop in there. That's fine. It's really because I'm not very long on IQ. I have a short attention span. You think I'm kidding, but she knows better. Don't we all? Let's go back to San Bernardino County Hospital on the date of this incident. Were you admitted to the hospital, meaning from the emergency room? Did they take you up to a room and make you stay overnight? They took me in on a stretcher or whatever they call it from the ambulance, courtesy ambulance. No, I did not stay overnight. I was there seven hours in emergency. The only reason they let me go home was that I had my son to watch. I had to have someone watch me for nausea, hallucination, bleeding, anything, and to get back there immediately if any of those things happened. Did any of those things happen? No, not that night. Well, thank goodness, uh-huh, other than your treatment in the emergency room at San Bernardino County Hospital, have you been admitted, meaning staying overnight, in any hospital since June of 2011? No. How is it that you chose Dr. Rose as a doctor to go and see? I had heard that he was quite a good doctor, and I had been wanting to go to a neurologist because I'm having trouble with turning my neck from side to side, down and back. It hurts very bad. Plus, I still have an indented place in my skull, indicating the back of your head, correct? Yes, that's where you have the sutures from the cut in your head? Yes, on the left side. Again, for the court reporter to take down where you're pointing, we have to describe it with words. Okay, were you given any medication by the doctor in the emergency room at San Bernardino County Hospital in June of 2011 while I was there? No, to take home with you, ma'am. No, they do not give a sedative or anything for a head injury. He told me that. Were you given a prescription medication by anybody since June of 2011. No, we're excluding, I'll go through that, other than the procardia. No, you were given the heart medication? Yes, okay, isn't, it isn't given to you, but you have to pay for it? Yes, now you were prescribed heart medication? Yes, has anyone prescribed anything other than heart medication for you? No, they haven't. Do you know who the doctor is that prescri prescribed the heart medication for you at the county hospital? His name is Dr. Cantrell. Can you spell that please? It is C-A-N-T-R-E-L-L. -L. Between June of 2011 and one month ago, when you went to see Dr. Rose, have you been seen by any other medical doctor or quiet, or excuse me, or chiropractor? I was seen by a chiropractor shortly after the accident for about a month approximately. Who was that, ma'am? I think the doctor's name was Dr. Sackett, or can you spell that without guessing? But he turned the business over to another doctor after I started going, and then I didn't go anymore after a month. All right, so I'm going to switch transcripts, okay, and I'm going to pick up again at 160. Okay, so I'm just writing a little note here where we ended. All right. Now, this is going to start with defense, but it is a court transcript, okay?
There we go. So let's pick right back up to 160. Did you tell the social worker that your Aunt Candy was using drugs in the house? No. Did, your, did you tell your grandmother was? Yes. Did you actually see Lamont P in a bottle? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Did you actually see Lamont P in a bottle? Yes. What happened to the bottle after he peed in it? She put the cap on it and she left to go to the doctor. Did you see her take it with her? Yes. Where did she put it? In her pocket. What was she wearing? I don't know, I don't remember. So you don't know if it was a pair of jeans, pants, blouse? I don't remember. And how many times did you see her do that? Actually see her put all the time. The urine in her pocket? All the time when she was going to go to the doctor. Now at the time that you were removed or just before you were removed from your mom this last time, you weren't getting along with her, were you? No. And you and your mom had discussed with the social worker having you live somewhere else. Is that correct? Your Honor, I'm going to object as to relevance and beyond the scope of direct. Overruled, I don't think there was an answer to the last question. Do you remember the last question? No. Do you, Ms. Kareen? Yes. Did you and your mother discuss with the social worker having you live anywhere other than your mother's because you weren't getting along? No, I have to tell her I didn't want to stay with my mother. Okay, did the social worker do anything about it? Yes, what did she do? Remove me to my auntie, Lil Moss but she didn't move you to your aunties until you made these allegations. Is that correct? Say again, she didn't remove you to your aunts? Yes, until you made the allegations? Until I made the yes. How long before this happened did you tell the social worker you needed to live away from your mother? Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Overruled. I probably told her a couple times that I didn't want to stay with my mother, that you didn't want to stay with your mother, that I didn't, that you wanted to stay with your mother, is that what you said? I didn't, and before any of the allegations were made, did she say anything about, no, she didn't, excuse me, you need to wait for him to finish his question before you give your answer, okay? Okay, they need to get it on the record. Okay, Your Honor, I have no further questions. I'm sorry, just a few more. I need a moment. Leah, when your brother and sisters were hit by your mother, actually, when she would hit them with her slipper, now, can you tell us about that? Would she do it over and over? Did this happen all the time? Or was it just a one-time incident? Can you tell them, can you tell the jury, did she hit, the, hit them with their clothes on or underneath their clothes? Keenan, she would take down his slipper or his diaper with her slipper and she would hit him on his butt. But with the other two kids, you know, Jesse and Lamont, she'd hit them sometimes with their clothes on, sometimes with no clothes on. And you said after they would get hit that they would cry? Yes, very hard. Did they cry because they were hurt or because they were upset or that she was angry? I don't know, probably both. Objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. Move to strike the answer. Sustained. Answer stricken. Granted. Have you ever been hit with a slipper before? No. Not ever? No. Have you seen a pot in the bathroom when you were living at home during the last time? A pipe? No, a pot, like a pan. 
for the babies? Any sort of pot or pan. Yes. What sort of pot or pan have you seen in the bathroom? For the babies, a blue one. And what was this there for? For the kids to use in the bathroom so my mom could use their pee for her drug tests. You know, she would take like the little ones, Keenan, to be potty trained and would have him go pee in there and save his pee. Okay, was there ever a red pot? I don't remember. You don't remember? And did your mother ever have any of the kids pee into that pot? Yes. For her to take the urine? Yes. How many times did you see your mother ask them to pee in that pot? Three or four times? Three or four times? Would she normally do it that way? Or would she normally use the jar? The same thing for like the doctor, that they make you pee in for the doctor, like that. I'm confused. Did she have the kids pee directly into the jar or did she have them pee into the pot? The pot the first time. And then she'd pour it? She'd pour it, yes. And would she ever have them pee directly into the jar? You mean pour it right into the jar? Would she ever have the kids pee? No, no. Pee right into the jar? No. So it was always in the pot. And then she would transfer it into the jar? No further questions. I need a moment to contemplate, counsel. I'm not sure if I have a question or not. Does the court want to take a brief recess? No, I just need a moment, one or two at the most. When you saw Lamont and Jesse pee in the pot, were you in the bathroom at the same time? I would be in front of the door. Was the door open or closed? Open. Were you looking and watching? Yes. Was your mother in there also? Yes. Did your mother help the children wipe with toilet paper? Yes. Was that before or after or both times when the children urinated? What do you mean? Did she help them wipe themselves after they urinated? Yes. Did she help them wipe before they urinated? After. After only. And was Lamont still in the bathroom when you saw your mother pour the pee into the jar? No, he had leave, go outside. And how about Jessie? She probably sit there with you, I don't remember. And you were standing at the door all of these times? Not all of them. Okay, so let's do one take of read back. Okay. All right. All right, so this is gonna be defense. And I'm gonna start, I'll read this at 161, 41, 20. Here we go. Okay. All right, here we go. Are you familiar with my client's operation? I'm familiar with the trash chutes installed in the park. Were you present at the time they were installed? No, I was not. Had you received any type of complaints about the way that the trash chutes were operating at the time that you arrived? At the time I arrived, there was no one living there, so there were no complaints at the beginning. When was the first time you were made aware of any type of complaints with the operation of the trash chutes when you were there? October or November? How were you made aware of it? There were owner complaints. What type of complaints were being made to you at that time? The doors were extremely hard to open. Once opened, they couldn't get them closed. From my standpoint, I couldn't adjust them to eliminate the problems. Were there any other complaints you noted from the complaints brought up by the homeowners? That was it. Were the foot pedals operational? In some cases they were, and in some cases they weren't. 
All right, so we'll stop there. Um, I am going to read this again at 1.40. Okay, here we go. Are you familiar with my client's operation? I'm familiar with the trash chutes installed in the park. Were you present at the time they were installed? No, I was not. Had you received any type of complaints about the way that the trash chutes were operating at the time that you arrived? At the time I arrived, there was no one living there, so there were no complaints at the beginning. When was the first time you were made aware of any type of complaints with the operation of the trash chutes when you were there, October or November? How were you made aware of it? There were uh, owner complaints. What type of complaints were being made to you at that time? The doors were extremely hard to open. Once opened, they couldn't get them closed. From my standpoint, I couldn't adjust them to eliminate the problems. Were there any other complaints you noted from the complaints brought up by the homeowners? That was it. Were the foot pedals operational? In some cases they were, and in some cases they weren't. All right, let's do it one last time at 120. Are you familiar with my client's operation? I'm familiar with the trash chutes installed in the park. Were you present at the time they were installed? No, I was not. Had you received any type of complaints about the way that the trash chutes were operating at the time that you arrived? At the time I arrived, there was no one living there, so there were no complaints at the beginning. When was the first time you were made aware of any type of complaints? with the operation of the trash chutes when you were there, October or November. How were you made aware of it? There were owner complaints. What type of complaints were being made to you at that time? The doors were extremely hard to open. Once opened, they couldn't get them closed. From my standpoint, I couldn't adjust them to eliminate the problems. Were there any other complaints you noted from the complaints brought up by the homeowners? That was it. Were the foot pedals operational? In some cases they were, and in some cases they weren't. All right. So we'll go ahead, ahead and read that back. And we can each take a Q and an A if you want. Just let me know if you guys, when you found your spot. I'm good. Okay. I can start if you want. Did you find your spot, Catherine? Um, yes. You did? Okay. All righty, here we go. I'll start off. Question, are you familiar with my client's operation? Answer, I'm familiar with the trash chutes installed in the park. Question, were you present at the time they were installed? Answer, no, I was not. Awesome. Um, question, have you received any type of complaints about the way that the trash chutes were operating at the time that you arrived? Uh, answer, at the time I arrived, there was no one living there, so there were no complaints at the beginning. Awesome. Question, when was the first time you were made aware of any type of complaints with the operation of the trash chutes when you were there? Answer, October or November? Question, how were you made aware of it? Answer, there were owner complaints. 
Awesome. <clears throat> Question, what type of complaints were being made to you at that time? Answer, the doors were extremely hard to open. Once opened, they couldn't get them closed. From my standpoint, I couldn't adjust them to eliminate the problems. Awesome. Is it my turn? Uh, yeah. It yeah. is? Sorry, guys. Question. Were there any other complaints you noted from the complaints brought up by the homeowners? Answer, that was it. Question, were the foot pedals operational? Answer, in some cases they were, and in some cases they weren't. Perfect, you guys. Awesome. Can you guys attend tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow morning? Um, I might be able to, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. No, I will not be in the morning class tomorrow, but okay. I will be in the evening class. Okay. Sounds good. I will, hopefully I'll see both of you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Joe, just one more question about the machines. Um, yeah. is there any place that I can, uh, go to try one out besides like the uh, conventions? Because, you know, I want to make sure that, um, that I like it before, you know. Right. You know, I'm sure that you could. Um, definitely, they've got to have something. Um, I would look up like Stenograph and if you want to look up, um, you know, if you're looking into ProCAD, I would, I would actually look them up and call them and say, hey, can I, you know, I know the rep for Stenograph is Michelle McLaughlin um, and she's local. So um, I'm sure that they have, some kind of a trial thing so that you, cause they, that, you know, you can't be the first person that's ever said that it's like a, you know, a car, you want to test drive it. That's a lot of money to put into a machine. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely, um, what did Mich Michelle McLaughlin help you, Catherine, when you were, you went to that function when you got your machine? I think it was, is she blonde? Yeah. 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 She okay. was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That I went to school. We were in theory together. We went to school together. I think she mentioned that because we were talking about Robert and you and she knew about Platinum Steno and all that. So yeah, gosh, she was, she sold me on my machine. Honestly, she's so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's, she's so knowledgeable about yeah the machines and yeah, she was awesome. Anyway, it's kind of funny because she went to high school with my husband, they graduated high school together. Isn't that crazy? I know, I know. So, um, but yes, Nora, I would definitely um, go onto the website for Stenograph and mm -hmm. get their number and say, hey, I really would like to try out a machine and then do the same thing for um, ProCAD if you wanna try a machine from ProCAD. Okay. Okay. I'm curious when you find out because I was wondering the same thing and I ne ended up never asking because it just, I was able to go to the convention last year at the time that I was getting ready to buy my machine. So yeah, I, um, I was able to try them all at the convention, but I'm curious about that. Cause I was kind of wondering the same thing. Like, how do you make your choice if you can't mm -hmm. test drive them all, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, they have the rent to own, but if you're already ready to buy your your professional machine, you know, you want to try it out. So definitely. I love, I love my Luminex. I will tell you that. I've heard great <laughs> things about it. It's amazing. Yeah. So I would definitely do that, Nora. That's what I would do. I would call them. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, you guys will have a wonderful night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye guys.